Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm gonna to be comparing two Hoka shoes that I've got. On the one hand, the Speedgoat 5s that I've now done almost 300 miles in, and the ATR Challenger 7s, which I picked up much more recently. So I've only done one long run in them. But I wanted to share my thoughts here, and hopefully you'll find this useful if you're deciding between the two which to go for, or if you've got one of these pairs already and you're thinking about, well, how would the ATR Challenger compare to, say, the Speedgoat 5? Off the bat, I want to say that I think they're both excellent shoes. However, I do also think that they have some limitations in terms of how you might use them. So I'll share those a little bit later on. So firstly, just a quick breakdown of the technical spec. The Hoka Speedgoat 5s, they've got a heel to toe drop of four millimeters. So that's the difference between the stack of the heel and the forefoot. And the lugs they've got on the bottom, which you can see here, they are much more pronounced than those of the Challenger. And they are five mil in total for their depth. Hoka describes this as having neutral cushioning as well. So that is the Speedgoat 5s. Oh, and the other thing is the weight. So the weight of them is 330 grams in my UK size 11 with wide fit. So I typically go up half a size for Hoka shoes because they are quite narrow uh, and they, they tend to fit on the smaller sides. Yeah, I've gone up half a size for, for these. And then for the ATR Challenger 7s, we've got a heel to toe drop of five millimeters. The lug depth is four millimeters and they're much more square lugs. And then the weight comes in at 305 grams, so about 25 grams lighter than the Speedgoat 5s. So next on to the uppers, the glaring point of similarity between these two is that both of them have this very pronounced heel tab, which Hoka seem to be using on all of their shoes now. And it's very nice as you slip your foot into the shoe, so it's very comfortable. Your Achilles feels supported when you're running. However, a possible limitation is that if you're running on trails with a lot of debris, this can act like a bit of a funnel and you can get dirt inside your shoe. A difference between these shoes on the ATR Challenger side of things the upper is much more plush, so if you like a plush shoe, then this might be the one to go for. And you can see that in things like the tongue. So the tongue here, it's much more plush, much more padded. Not the most padded tongue out there, but you do get more padding than you do for the Speedgoat 5, where the tongue is much more minimal. And I did have a problem with the Speedgoat 5s early on, where the tongue would disappear inside the shoe. However, I've started using the top eyelet, as suggested by someone who follows the channel, and that's been very good for holding the tongue in place, and I don't get so many of those disappearing act issues now. So I took the ATR Challengers out for a test run the other day, about 16 miles in total, so put them through their paces, and there was a mixture of terrain there, some road, some trail, uh, there was gravel paths in there, there was chalk, there was some muddy stuff, some grass, and they dealt well with most of the terrain. However, on the road sections where there was a bit of frost, they were slipping about all over the place. And I think that's probably because of the exposed EVA foam you've got on the bottom. So the ATR Challenger 7s are really not dealing well with this path. So I've just come across this here, which is like a newly tarmac path, but there's a tiny bit of frost on it and you can literally just skate, skate down it. So instead, I'm just gonna run on the side to avoid this. So yeah, they really didn't deal well with that. Overall, I would say they were good on roads. When the roads were dry, it was super running in these. They were really, really good because there was very smooth transitions. They felt very at home there. Um, some good cushioning as well. So then they're, they're fairly bouncy, a little bit more bouncy than the Speedgoat 5s. Um, still not as much as something like the Speedgoat 4s or you know some of the more bouncy road shoes out there. But yeah, the only limitation I would say is, you know, be aware if you're running on probably very wet roads or slightly frosty roads, then these might be a bit slippy. So the ATR Challengers, I'm gonna use them probably much more as a summer trail shoe. They, they deal well with light trails. They work well on road, as I said before, as long as it's not too wet or frosty or icy. 
Whereas the Speedgoat 5s, I'm probably, as I do at the moment, going to use these much more as a kind of all-out trail shoe. They don't fare too badly on the road. You know, they're not the heaviest or bulkiest shoe. The lugs aren't too aggressive on the bottom, but the transitions in the ATR Challenger, they're much smoother and it's much easier on the road, unless, as I said, it's kind of too icy or, or wet. The thing I would say about both of these shoes is that neither of them can deal with extreme mud. So neither of them are going to be good for very boggy conditions. However, they can deal with a, a bit of mud. You know, the Speedgoat 5 is a bit better because they've got more traction on the bottom. The lugs are a bit more pronounced. Whereas with the squarer lugs that you've got on the ATR and that exposed EVA that you've got too, probably less so on the mud. And then finally, in terms of distance. So it's a bit hard to say on the ATR challenges at the moment in terms of what distance I might use them for. However, it does feel like they've got a little bit more bounce to them than the Speedgoat 5s. They're not as bouncy as the Speedgoat 4s, so I had those before, and they would give you a lot of energy return. But, you know, I could see myself at least running a trail marathon in these, uh, 50k certainly, I think they would be comfortable for. Beyond that, it's difficult to know at this point, but yeah, I think they would deal very well with that. The Speedgoat 5s, I'm still not sure on this. I'd be very happy running a trail marathon in them um, and probably a 50k too, but 50 mile distance, not so sure because I think with the lack of bounce and and also the, the more dull cushioning that you have on them, you might feel it a little bit on the bottoms of your feet in the later stages of, say, a 50 miler. So I hope you found that comparison useful. Do let me know in the comments below if you've got either of these pairs of shoes, how do you find them? What are your thoughts on them so far? And also if you've got any questions you want to ask about the shoes, if there's anything I haven't covered there, then do let me know and I can get back to you on that.